Hi, hi guys. We're just uh, messing with the audio for a sec. Hold tight. Okay, down a little more on music. Maybe there. You don't hear it at all? It was the end of the song. <laughs> One more moment. Bless you. Bless you. Token Sammy sneeze. You know the day's going to be great. That's the next song. Good? Okay. We just have to figure out a little bit more stuff on the mixer, but otherwise we'll be good, guys. Wow. This looks really different for me, so... How does it look for you guys? Because we are 100% streaming from the iMac right now. <laughs> kind of funny how we started with the MacBook oh, and now we worked yeah. back towards the iMac. So crazy. Hot Carl, thank you for starting the stream this way. 10 months in a row already? What? The right slider? Like the system sounds? That's good. Okay. Yeah, disown me, right? And I also did a lot of fandangling with like the overlay as well. So it should be a lot more clear. It's running Windows. Yeah, the Mac is running Windows, by the way, guys. So that was all Sammy. He did it in a couple hours, switched everything up, and that's the setup that we're gonna bring into the truck with us. So might as well start using it now and make sure that everything works how we think it will. But so far, so good. And let us know if it lags or anything like that today as well, guys. So welcome in. I'm gonna scroll all the way up and welcome everyone. And I also want to say thanks guys for helping Sam to fix all of this this morning too. We had a little test stream. Hello to Orca, early, early, Madame, hello. Yeah, it came right back when the remote teaching starts, of course, right? Hi Bonk, hi Cookie, good to see you guys. Torino, Lauren, American, frankly delicious, hello. And we got Kimmers in here. Oh, Kimmers. I saw the baby raccoons last night. Adorable. Made my entire week, I would say. Hello, small blue cat. And hi, Dust. Dust, I'm excited for you to get your Dynamic Pro. <laughs> when falling asleep goes wrong. In all the right ways, though. And cheers, friends. As you guys can probably tell, I am feeling way better this week so bad juju gone got it. just a low energy week last week and yeah i'm feeling awesome this week ready to get into it with you guys oh yes 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 i may have found something this morning on the internet so it sounds like you know how last week i was like wow i wish i had a second incarcerum bottom so i can mix dough while also grinding meat searches on the marketplace here six hundred dollars a lady up island is getting rid of her whole incarcerum. It's been used twice to make cookies. So we're waiting to hear back, but that is going to be the next greatest thing ever for the food truck, guys. I'm so excited. Like half off. Half off at least. You wanted to get one of the dynamic pros in you, does. <laughs> well, that's awesome then. Seriously, that thing is going to outlast you. And yeah, it's pink. So that one can be Sammy's and then I'll have the original one. <laughs> Trying to make an appointment for the Stabby Stabby. I did oh, that this morning. I did that yesterday. When's yours? Uh, the 26th. Mine's on the 30th, guys. First Pope. Yeah good yesterday so i get my message i'm like okay i have to go register now for my needle he was like what about me like, did you get a message <laughs> no i was like where's my message did you remember to do it yeah well did you get a message no well then you wait i got mine this morning Yes, it this morning <laughs> okay let's get into it guys I don't think we have anything else new to report for the week. I don't believe so. No, 
we're all good. Trying to make an appointment for the end of the month too. Most places won't schedule out that far. Oh, really? That was really easy how we did it. We just get a little text message and you put in a registration number, your health number, and it lets you choose your own date and time. It was wonderful. I'm very excited. All right, so we have one awesome recipe link today from Food and Wine Mag, one of my other kind of favorite food recipe site to go to when I don't know what to make for everyone. <laughs> So seared albacore tuna loin, we're still working through the fish in the freezer. So I'm just gonna basically try and find as many tuna recipes as we can. So feel free to share some if you have any. So that going with a chili lime mango salad. So kind of bright and fresh. We'll also throw in some of the grilled pineapple that I have left over, cause that'll be really yummy. And then to just prep up for tomorrow a bit, we'll make tomorrow's ciabatta bun dough for the brisket sandwiches. We will roast our peppers for the aioli tomorrow. And then we'll also trim the brisket for Sam ahead of time so that tomorrow morning, what, you're probably gonna be up at two? Yeah, 2 a.m. Sammy will be up starting the stream. At least the brisket is all trimmed. He just has to rub it and spice it and put it on the grill. So uh, definitely a marathon sort of stream tomorrow, but we love those, don't we? We cooking brisket. <laughs> okay, so that's what's going down today. I'm just looking over the recipe here, what they say for the grilled tuna with chili lime mango salad. And you can do this with all different sorts of tuna. It doesn't have to be albacore. I noticed that in this recipe, they use like a probably an ahi tuna steak which grills up basically just the same way that we do our tuna all the time if we serve it raw. Fresh fish sounds so good. Gotta use your leftovers from the Italian restaurant. Oh, roast pork sub and caprese salad is giant though. That sounds so good. Like, are you saying like a porchetta where they like chop it up and then put chimichurri in the sandwich, Lauren? Such a good sandwich. I know, right? Small blue cat. It's like, stop talking. We're too hungry. Okay, so this recipe that we're using today is from a Fijian chef that has a restaurant in LA. Shared this recipe for grilled sushi grade tuna. That is a important thing that we should note as well before we start is if you are going to be eating your tuna or any fish raw for that matter, you should make sure, make sure that it is sushi grade or you know exactly where it came from, who processed it, etc. So I know that the tuna that we use, it literally came from the boat into our place, was still basically frozen from sitting in the boat because we had to let it thaw before we took the tuna apart. So we're all good there. So they say coconut husks and charcoal made from the husks is the fuel of choice in Fiji, which burns hot and clean without imparting lots of smoky flavor into the food. They're great for grilling fresh meaty fish like tuna, which is quickly seared and only cooked to rare. You can find coconut charcoal at hardware stores or online or substitute hardwood lump charcoal. So that's what we're gonna do today. Is my stream elements going insane kind of or did it just randomly time out like that today what? yeah super interesting it just seems like it's stacking up on itself oh it's probably just just how the day is right yeah really interesting hey lauren like the different countries and what type of charcoal that they use i would love to be able to use like a coconut charcoal one day how cool would that be but I think that we will just grill the tuna. Like you can sear and grill the tuna at the same time. You just wanna make sure that your charcoal is really, really hot, right? So we'll light up the Mini Max today. And that way, before we do the tuna, we'll grill up the peppers for tomorrow's roasted red pepper mayo for the sandwich. And then those will be done. And then we'll do the tuna and then everything will come together. That sounds good. Okay, so just reading through the recipe here, and this is a very simple seasoning on the fish today. So it's literally just salt and pepper, which is also why it's important to have very high quality fish. 
But then again, high quality fish doesn't need a lot of seasoning to make it taste good, right? So right away on the recipe, he starts up the grill because while well, it does take a bit of time and then while it's heating up, he makes the salad, but we'll do it a little bit different today. We'll make up the salad. And then like I said, we'll prep up a couple other things and then grill the fish kind of at the end. Shouldn't be too, too long of a stream today either, just for the fact that tomorrow's stream is gonna be quite long for us. Fresh tuna is very expensive there in Sweden, Frank. It is very expensive here too. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I can't recall what one very small sushi grade tuna loin prepared. They have them in the freezer here, which is actually quite nice to uh, have access to, but we would never buy that because it's so expensive. Uh, I think for the one loin, it was like $30 or something and it wasn't even that big. And that's the thing, Orca, is fish is expensive in general, I would say. Like if you want good quality, you're gonna pay for it. And I guess that's kind of with anything in the world now, right? Okay, so we're gonna start by, oh, we get to use a mortar and pestle today. This will be really, really fun. It's gonna be a fun stream, going old school. And thanks, Lauren, gifting the sub to Baby Orca. You've gifted nine subs to our wonderful community already. Welcome in, Baby Orca. Eight months in a row already with this one. <laughs> Did I find what a little louder? Uh, yeah, I did actually. Thanks for asking. All of them have been gift subs. Wow, Orca. Wow. Okay. So we're using the mortar and pestle to mash up lemongrass, sugar, chili. We add shallot into it, and then we make a smooth paste. This is gonna be really fun. We don't often cook like this, right? Kind of taking our time, having fun with it. And then at the end, it says we stir in lime juice and fish sauce. So that's gonna be kind of the dressing, I would say, for the mango salad. I didn't know we were out, because it's not on the grocery list. This guy. It's fine. We'll make do another way. No, it's fine. Just put it on the grocery list when you use something up. Shake my head. Okay, so we won't use fish sauce, but we will use lime juice. Thank goodness it's 2021 where we can still blame Sammy. Poof. Okay, <laughs> so after we do that, <laughs> we're gonna prep up the mango, which is really thinly sliced. And then yeah, we toss the mango and we'll add pineapple into there with the dressing. Maybe add a little bit of greens to the like underneath part of the mango just to bulk it up, but very low carb, healthy dish. And hi, Mickey, how are you doing today? Yeah, cooking couple problems, you know it. You know it, small blue cat. <laughs> yeah, grocery fights become much more intense when both spouses are also chefs. <laughs> well, it's like I can add stuff to the list while I'm streaming, so I never forget it. So yeah. Sounds like I'm not making jerky, so we don't need fish sauce. <laughs> so cute. I'm gonna click on that link, Frank. Rapid rise of sustainable steward or sustainable tuna. I don't know why I read stewardship. Oh, because it's at the top there. So we have something in Canada called Ocean Wise. So it's nice to see you posting something about that as well, frankly, from another, another side of the world. All right, I'm going to make up our quick little list and then away we go. Anyone cooking anything delicious or munching today? Oh, we're almost at the end of this book again. End of the weekend, that'll be it. Okay, so first things first, I think we will just start by prepping up the dressing with the lemongrass and all of that goodness. Orca, I've not updated the cookbook yet for this Saturday, but I'll be doing that after the stream today. 
but feel free if anyone wants to get the Maddie Matheson cookbook, we'll definitely be cooking more out of it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just write down on the list lemongrass dressing, let's say. And then under that, I'll say prep the mango and tuna. And the pineapple for the salad. Maybe I'll clip a little bit of just a nice bed of greens from the garden. Greens. And then for the tuna, it's just salt and pepper. Really, really simple. And then our grill. Which it's really nice when you grill directly over charcoal is you don't have to wait nearly as long as if you were, let's say, doing like a long smoke or roasting in the grill, right? So it heats up pretty fast and then it's just directly over the charcoal. That's amazing. Yeah, you use the pea break emotes in another stream, which thanks, Lauren. I love that. And they died laughing when they came back. More people need it, right? Okay, and then at the end of the list, I'll just put our ciabatta dough, our favorite one ever. And then under the tuna there, I'll also put the peppers for grilling. Okay. Oh, and then lastly, the brisket. Yeah, once we get into it, this day is going to roll. This is my really neat writing today. It's like first stream back, cannot even read what is going on. <laughs> Hello, silent one. How are you doing? All right, I'm going to get everything out and then away we go. So we need lemongrass, shallot, sugar, chili. I might add a little bit of ginger in because that sounds delish. We'll grab a lime out as well. Mass amount of chilies. <laughs> yeah, a mix of letter blocking and cursive all together. <laughs> Lemon Plus the ginger needs help guys. And then I think I'm just gonna prep it and freeze the rest of it. It needs a little love in its life. Well, it says another box of jerky for the jerky boys or for the food truck boys. And they absolutely devoured it. And they're excited for the next box of honey pot. Yeah. Food truck boys already destroyed their box of jerky we sent. It's hilarious. Oh, nice one, Silent. We were literally just talking right at the start of stream. Sammy's got his first booking on the 26th this month and then mine's on the 30th. Very exciting. Phone doesn't have 5G, <laughs> but now it does. Yes, unlocked. <laughs> yeah, Chili's chilling in the chiller, Frank. Also, I found out the packaging I need to sell beef jerky across Canada. That's all I need. I'm just working on that currently. Nice one. Getting into it. Okay, so this is what we're going to use for the mortar and pestle today. Just because my other one is going to be too small for all of this stuff that we're going to add. So this is actually a Mexican version of a mortar and pestle. It's called the mocajete. Mocajete, so it's nice, really heavy stone. Same with this thing. I'm just gonna give it a little wipe real quick and then we'll get into it. Looks like a computer anti-static bag. <laughs> and yeah, I'm excited for you too, Lauren. So far, everyone is going nuts over the hot honey. But it doesn't even last a day. Okay, there's this. Yeah, we bought a, a good bunch of chilies. I think we'll do... Let's grab a smaller one. We'll do those four. 
And then as usual, so we just grabbed the handful again. And then did you guys know that you can keep fresh chilies in the freezer whole? And that's what I always do when I want some fresh red chilies in my life. So I'll just take this whole handful, pop it in this resealable container, and that just goes into the freezer like this. And then when you need a fresh chili, just take it out, let it thaw for literally a few moments, and there's your fresh chili. It works really, really good. And these look very fresh. need to grab the sugar <laughs> orca you need a new brain this is scary <laughs> that's what happens if your fridge gets kind of too wet or whatever if it's sitting in a bag if there's too much moisture mold or bacteria loves that stuff and then like I said with the rest of this since it doesn't want to stay now it got too wet we'll just uh trim it all up and then we'll put it in the freezer as well and ginger stays really good and it's even easy to grate with like a microplane out of the freezer. Yes, peeling it with the back of a spoon or even the back of a paring knife works really good. So I'm just going to get into this lemongrass, kind of peel off some of the outer leaves that are a bit dry. And then we will give it a little bit of a chop, the lemongrass, just to kind of get it started. It's really a, a tough, tough woody, herb let's say and then I also just want to trim the ends of it first where it's kind of seen seen better days it's a very fibrous vegetable but man does it have flavor okay that this we can just pick the top stem off and then those are good to go. Reading the recipe. Oh yeah, the shallots though. Just gotta grab that from the other fridge. This is gonna be potent. Very flavorful, for sure. Flavorful, refreshing. Hello, ginger tea. Yeah, I hope you are doing good. This week has been awesome so far. I'm happy to be back with you guys. A lot more energy than last week, that's for sure. We're on the up and up. Okay, so I'll just flip that onto the flat side. We'll just kind of rough chop all the stuff that we are gonna use in the mortar and pestle, like I said, just to kind of get it started. Shallot's gonna be added kind of near the end, I believe. We'll just pop that over there. We do start with the lemongrass. I think you always start with like the most fibrous veggie, right? Tater fly, local grocery store doesn't have Thai red, so you normally just substitute green chilies instead. Are they interchangeable? Yeah. I would say unless you're looking to like preserve the color of something, right? But as we have learned in the past, is the different colors of chilies just means that they have been picked at different times, that's all. And thanks, Frank. Yeah, 40 some days until the move, silent. 
Yeah, the break helped as well. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's great. We didn't stream on Sunday. So my mom and I went for a massive hike. We are gone for five hours. Just uh, decided to walk up a mountain that day, but man, it was so nice. And yeah, I was really wrecked the next few days after that, quite sore, but it felt good. Good to get out into nature. I hope everyone else had a good Mother's Day as well. This is going to be fun. It might be a little bit loud. Probably not, though. I always think things are going to be louder than they are. It's part of producing a show, I think. Sammy says he'll let me know because he's got his headphones on. So yeah, I'm going to start by breaking this up first because I don't really want to splash the chili juices around too much. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, Bong. Because like we like spicy, but not really to the point where you just can't taste anything else. Oh, for the sugar, we'll definitely use some of the organic coconut sugar. this goodness I think we're gonna start so this thing is actually so comfy to hold on to as well I think all we're gonna basically start doing is like literally smashing it wow that's so fragrant already Um, I'm gonna come in a bit more and how's the lighting today guys is it just how it looks on my end but is it really bright for you still just seems a little bit more dull hmm it looks great okay it's just my monitor then so yeah this is all I'm gonna do is just kind of hit it first to break it up into the smaller fibers and then we can start to like really smash it, I think. Yeah, that's really softening it up. Oh yeah. So interesting. And I've not used these a ton, so I always kind of play around with using it in different ways to see what works the best. <laughs> Thanks, Orca. And Tame Bogo, we got a food baby. Nine month resub. Holy heck. We had a 10 month earlier and an eight month as well. How are you doing this week, Tame? And did we name the baby? Yeah. Oh no, Sammy K does another Twitch baby. Sounds like as long as it's not a real one. <laughs> All of the food babies. I love it, guys. Thank you so much. Now this stuff is uh, working its way out. I don't know. I feel like I should have maybe cut it even finer. Because then the fibers would have been shorter, right? But maybe this is how it's supposed to be. And also, it might be as we add more stuff, it'll break down a bit more too, right? Because there's not a ton in there yet. Did we fix it? No, that's just how it came. Yeah, it's so cool, hey? How it has that nice little, like, white line through the stone. I think Sammy picked this one up off of Amazon as well. And yeah, this is actually called a mo mocha hete. It's a Mexican version of a mortar and pestle that is typically used to like make guac and salsas, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, Orca. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, just reading this through. So mash chopped lemongrass with a mortar and pestle until it's finely ground. Add sugar and chili. 
Okay, I'm going to try and go a bit more than in here. Work it back into the bottom. Thank you very much. Contributing some biddies to our food truck fund as well. Thank you for the 864. Oh, 420. Nice. 420,000 bits out of the 100K. Wow. That's all I can say. Or 1 million. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good math. We don't often math here. That's why. I never claim to teach math. I only teach cooking. this is going to go any finer. I think that's as far as it's going to go, guys. <laughs> it just looks like hair. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to use a little bit of salt, I think I might throw some in with the sugar right now. And that'll create more friction, right, Frank? A little bit of both. Yeah, didn't know we were making hay today. The camels are gonna love it. Scarlet. <laughs> okay, a little bit of our coconut sugar. Smells good. Yeah, I think the key is just kind of rubbing it around the edge. Yeah, like I said earlier, is maybe I should have chopped it just a little bit shorter so that the fibers would be smaller. But I mean, like, at the end of the day, you can't really break up lemongrass unless you really blend it smooth and, like, chop the fibers, right? Okay, let's add the chili. That's a good little workout, too. <laughs> Heavy breathing. Never had the pleasure of using lemongrass. Not readily available around you. Oh, wow. It's literally a grass that just smells like the freshest lemon ever. It's pretty amazing. Okay, maybe we'll do the chilies with a little, little nubby of ginge. Since I'm going to put some of this into the freezer, I'm just gonna cut off here. And then I'm just gonna trim it or just peel it quickly. There we go. And John Deeds, thank you for that follow. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. It is a very chonky ginger. Just gonna slice that a few times. Very juicy as well. Pop that in there. So, so far we got lemongrass, salt, coconut sugar, and we just put in ginger and chilies. Push all that back down. 
and then start punching it again. <laughs> and my, I just got my eyes kind of closed just in case the chili juice splashes. Would you guys say that this is probably the first way people like figured out how to break things up was like smashing it with two rocks? There was probably a mortar and pestle before knives, right? So like this always feels very oh, like kind of prehistoric or caveman-ish. We're going back, seeing how they used to prep stuff. Oh, those chilies. I can smell it. Just trying to break them up, but I don't mind those kind of bigger little skin chunks. It's starting to smell spicy. Okay, that worked good. Next one, shallots. Dust would say that's likely. For sure, hey? Yeah, plus the spears. Oh, kefir lime leaves. Yeah, might be easier to break down, I would say. I have some dried ones, so that wouldn't be the best thing to use in this today. It's going to add lots of juices into here. Going to be a very interesting mix up, I would say. Like way back when, cooking literally was like an all day thing. That's why like lots of old school movies is like there's always someone cooking. <laughs> it's like you have the cook of the village and that's it. Guys, I might just end up transferring this into the blender just because I don't love how it's looking. But I wanted to like play around more with this and see how everything worked. Because that's really the only way to get familiar. And yeah, I'm crying big time, big time, big time. But I would love to get that blended up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wash my hands with some soap and water and then I think I'm gonna quickly go blow my nose. And good morning, white dove. Yeah, don't poke Sam's face. Just use the Samomatic. <laughs> oh, that sounds really nice, Frank. Sounds like a good little packet of all the stuff you need for like a curry. Okay, what do I feel like using? I think I'm just gonna use the small. This little guy. Oh yeah, okay, hold tight. I'm just gonna go blow my nose, otherwise it's just gonna keep running, BRB.
I'm back. I am back and ready for some action. <laughs> Always ready for a snack. Let's see what this can do for us today. I think like one of my favorite things to use a mortar and pestle for, and it always works, is just like blending up or cracking open whole spices. That's what I've had the best luck with using a mortar and pestle or something along the lines of it. Never had the best luck using like wet ingredients in it, but it could be user error, which I think it is. Just because I'm not super familiar with it. Like I said, maybe I have to cut the stuff a bit smaller, but then in my mind, like if I'm gonna cut it, I might as well just throw it in the blender. Oh, that's spicier. <coughs> Yeah, will it blend? We're gonna see. I'm gonna add some of this lime juice to it that it needs anyways. Well, Orca, if this doesn't blend, then I guess that's where we're at. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. And I just want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Lemongrass, sugar, chili, shallot, lime juice a bit of fish sauce. Okay, let's see if that does anything at all. I'm just gonna go over to the blender back here. It's definitely a good thing that we didn't start the grill first thing like the recipe said. Like how, how the heck do you think that by the time we started the grill, we'd be done the salad, done this lemongrass part and ready to grill the tuna. There's no way. There is no way. And Sloth Man, half a year already? Wow, yeah, six months, let's go. Lego time. How are you doing today, Sloth? It's great to see you. I think you're right, Orca. I don't even think this is gonna do nothing. I'm kind of sad. I'm like, I don't just want to make a massive amount of the mixture. Then there'll just be too much of everything, right? That's the thing. Ooh, good one, Frank. Yeah, maybe just a touch of oil since it's kind of like a dressing anyways. And then the other thing I was just gonna add a little bit of for like liquid flavoring was just a touch of this ginger dressing. I don't wanna water down the flavor. That's the only thing that scares me adding water bonk, but it would be like the easiest thing, wouldn't it? Those are some good chunkies. We'll do a little bit like that and I'll do a touch of great seed oil. Hi, Vune, how are you? I got a little tickle in my throat from the pepper. <clears throat> that should definitely help. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Don't give up. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. That'll do it. Just not going to turn it up too high. Definitely got some blitzing happening, so that's good. Yeah, let it beat it to a pulp. So we got the starts, which makes me happy. You're struggling a bit, View, but you're on it. Just need a couple of days of reflection and a can-do attitude. Yeah, that's what I did for myself earlier this week, View. I've also been like sticking to my meditations and stuff like that. Every now and then though, I feel like we just need like a little reset almost. And yeah, let me know if you want to chat about anything after stream. We can always do that. A touch hungover bong? <laughs> Struggle gang. Struggling. I don't even recall the last time I was hungover. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it starting like that for now. We'll hang on to this little spatula here. We're done with the ginger. I will leave the oil out as well as the sugar just in case we feel like we need it. Yeah, thank you for the pro tips, Frank. I think it's working. Scarlet's never had a hangover in your life? Kudos. I'm not even mad, I'm impressed. Bune, on a side note, I made rainbow trout fillets with green beans and buttered rice. You're not a fan of trout. Fillet the fish yourself too, haven't done that a bit. How come you didn't like the trout? To me, it's like very similar to salmon. Maybe a little bit more like slimy though, kind of. But that's usually my other go-to if I'm craving salmon and can't find any. Okay, next thing I'm gonna get the mangoes out of the fridge and we will cut those up. It is the season here for mangoes right now. We got four big ones for six bucks I paid yesterday, which I thought was a pretty good price. A very weird aftertaste, not a bad aftertaste, just a fishy one that you can't get rid of. At least the waifu loved it. That's a good thing. And yeah, I think trout is kind of like that. Got a bit more aftertaste to it. I think I'm almost good here with this loose kind of dressing that we made. And don't put your face right over this when you open it because it's super spicy. To get in there. Nowhere near what I thought we would end up with, though. Maybe we will just loosen it up with a touch of water. Kind of clear it up a bit. Yeah, freshwater fish can be a bit more gamier, totally. See, we're learning stuff. There we go. Then I'm definitely gonna grab the other lime out of the fridge. Limey. Lime. 
We got our grilled pineapple piece. So yummy. And then our mango. I'm gonna do two mangoes. So good. Yum. Okay, this should be good. And then all I want to do is just pour it out into a bowl and then kind of doctor it up so it looks more like a dressing again. You also want to taste it to make sure that it is balanced as well, right? It's not sweet, it's not too acidic, it's not too salty. Sounds good, sloth. Yeah, they're so good, Vyun. It's mango season right now. At least the ones from Mexico, right? A tufo is in Mexico. They feel so heavy and like meaty. I'm so excited. And old style, welcome. Hope that the week has been treating you well. And thank you very much for the seven months in a row. I am loving these resubs today, friends. We're really getting up there. So proud of our little community. This just looks like not the tastiest mush. Tom's a whoop. Thank you for that follow. Welcome. Grateful for the sub that we gave to you, Vune. Yeah, but you miss the alerts sometimes, right? I wish that they still kept that on. Cause yeah, I miss it too. Okay, just a quick wash up cause there's a lot of chili in there. Yeah, I'm going to taste it. Don't you worry about that, Frank. We're going to juice this other lime. Or maybe I'll taste it first. And then the other thing I was thinking that we can add, just to kind of loosen it up more dressing-like, is there's a bit of this pineapple juice from the grilled pineapple. I think that would be so good in there. But let's grab a spoon. <laughs> Have a very small taste of this mixture so far. So it's lemongrass, shallot, ginger, chili, salt, pepper, lime juice. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's got like this kind of nice sweet and spiciness because of the shallot. Definitely going to add the pineapple juice just to tame down some of the chili for sure. And then the fruit will do the, that the rest of the way, we can say. No, not the grilled pineapple from front page day. That This is from last Saturday. Last Saturday, so it's not even a week old. That would be really old and not good anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab a small spoon so we can keep mixing this. Halibut is not fishy at all, Vune. Halibut to me tastes like chicken. Literally the chicken of the sea. Okay, let's roll this. Yeah, buy that. And then it's also very like meaty. So the flakes are really big. 
and it doesn't fall apart too easily. It's one of the best. I think you would love that the most, Pune. I'm gonna juice this by hand to make sure I get as much out as possible because I don't have another lime. Yeah, no worries, Orca. I know that you were kind of down and out last weekend, and that's all good. Halibut with salad would be nice then. Feta and a lemon dressing? Yeah, I could see that, Vune. Oh yeah, halibut fish and chips. That's like my grandma's favorite. Okay, that was really juicy. I think I will add still just a little bit more of the coconut sugar to that too. Get it to dissolve in. <laughs> Feta! <laughs> Get the feta. Like a little teaspoon. And then let's see how this tastes now. So we added some acid and sugar to help balance the flavor of the chili and the shallot. I almost just want to like put this in a strainer and just strain out the flavor. What do you guys think about that? Like a really fine mesh strainer and just let it sit as we keep streaming. Cause I just don't like the texture of this at all. You can't really spoon it or pour it or anything like that. Oh, I like pina coladas. Definitely. Yeah, I honestly think I'm just gonna try strain in it. This is what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna take this measuring cup with our fine mesh strainer. I'm gonna pop that in there. And let's see what comes out. It's definitely not appetizing looking, but it's very flavorful tasting. I'm just gonna put that aside, but it's already coming out. Okay, let's get a bowl, I think, just to put the fruit into. And then for plating later, I think we'll just put the little bit of greens on the bottom of the plate, and then we'll place our fruit around the plate as well, and then we'll just kind of drizzle over that nice dressing that we just made. Blend it with oil, it'll suck out all the flavor oils. Interesting. Okay, there's very juicy. Very juicy pineapple. We just gotta take the core out of there still. So all I'm gonna do is slice this in half lengthwise. There's that, and then I'm gonna trim off a little bit of that, some of the dry bits. And then I think I just wanna leave the pineapple kind of like in these smaller pieces. So this one I'll cut in half again, and then just come along this way so that we get like those nice little chunkies. You can see because the pineapple has been grilled, it's quite soft right now. So it's a little bit difficult to cut. It literally looks like a yellow jewel though. 
And the flavor has been really concentrated by grilling it. I think that's all I'm gonna use. And then the rest of the pineapple I'll keep for a smoothie for us. And I put that on the side. I'm gonna have a munch. A munch, a bite, a mite. The constant background music is new. So you're saying, Scarlett, that I just had it turned down way too low before. Because <laughs> I always had it on. Apparently not, though. Okay, so to peel our mangoes. What do we want to do? Actually, maybe maybe we'll take it down first. So there's a pit inside of here. If you've never used mango, it basically runs through this way. So not this way, but it's this way. And I would say it's like maximum one inch thick. So I usually just put this, kind of hold it there, and then make a slice here until we feel the pit and cut along each side of it. Oh, roasted and caramelized pineapple was served as a dessert at the Nobel Prize Festival hosted by your king. Cool. First time you noticed it, Scarlet. Perfect. Okay, so cut in. Whoa, I must be like right beside the pit because I literally don't feel it. Nice. Yummies. Now we'll turn the other side. Who loves to munch on the mango seed? That's like one of my favorite things to do. Munch all the little bitties from around. Yeah, right, Yoon? Just like peel off. Usually just take the skin, peel it off, and then just munch on it. Yeah, part of the mango ritual. Sam doesn't like to, so this will be kept for me later. Quite sure. Let's do the next one. Okay, madame. Just took you an hour to show your students how to open a Word document on Microsoft Teams, and it was a nightmare. Oh my gosh. Fortunately, you and your students bonded, and they're extremely patient with you and each other as you've transitioned to remote learning. That's so nice to hear. I'm glad you got it all figured out. Sammy says that crazy. Oh, the dark spots are the sugary goodness hot spots. Vyun. Yeah, I saw that it, or I kind of knew that it was mango season right now, or at least what we have access to. I was like, I'm definitely making something with mango this week. Man, my nose. Okay, so next one. He wants this like kind of speared up the way that we cut it, which could be nice. Let me see how my veggie peeler works on this. Just cause I know there's no way for us to get spears out of this right now if we were to just make slices, right? But let me see if I can peel the skin and then cut it down a bit smaller. Just I don't want the peeler to like peel away too much of the flesh, right? Well, it's working pretty good. I think we'll do that. I literally picked this recipe because I thought it was going to be like so easy. But so far, it's not been the quickest to make. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I've never done many of these techniques before, let's say. Let's see how ripe this is because I can barely hang on to it. You would really love some mango salad, madame. Come on over. The door is open. Yeah, that's looking great. 
okay a little bit more at the bottom beautiful and like I didn't even really mash it up too much that worked awesome and hi hi Mish how are you doing tonight you made spinach waffles for the first time and definitely not the last so it turned out good then you are saying peel that off because it's gonna get stuck and then also pick off the stem first time you bought a mango you peeled it first and that was a mistake fact Torino. <laughs> that probably got a little bit messy, didn't it? Misha's making spinach waffles and she says it was pretty good, guys. Fortunately, no feta, but smoked salmon. Oh, I do love me like a little little smoked salmon waffle sort of dealio. Go savory route with it. Not bad at all. And yeah, to peel it before cutting it, Lily, it just slips around and is like hard to hold on to. Chef John Reed with the raid. Welcome, the cheeky raid is here. Hello, hello to Dan. Hello, Chef. How's the day? How's the stream? Welcome to our kitchen. We're just currently peeling up some mangoes to cut up next to make a mango salad. We're gonna be grilling some fresh albacore tuna loin in a little bit here. And this recipe has some like Fijian inspiration, which I don't cook a lot. Hey, Chef Negan. How are you? Yeah, welcome friends. What did you get up to? And I'm doing good. I'm doing great actually. It's been a good week so far. We've only been on for about an hour now. Oh, and yeah, just yeah. prepping up our salad here and then we'll do a little grilling later and a touch of prep for tomorrow. Chef Negan, my dear, thank you very much for gifting the sub to Chef John Reed. It's always awesome having Food and drink streamers, sub to your channel, right? Made some crispy chicken marsala. Whoa, that sounds good, chef. I will have to keep my eyes peeled on Instagram or social media for you to post a photo of that. I'm just gonna use my paring knife to get this bottom piece off. Okay, so that's our second half, all peeled up, ready to go. Let's keep going. Crispy chicken marsala. Yum. <laughs> Way to fail the coffee pasta. Yeah, I'm good guys. And this stream is a little bit different. So some of you probably already know this, but Sam and myself, my husband, we are slowly transitioning to be moving into a food truck with the stream. So today's our first stream testing out using the iMac. So, so far so good as well. I'm really happy with how things are going. Gentlemen, chef, thank you for the follow. And yeah, other than that, we're on a countdown. I think we are close to like 50 days now. We're left in this space and then we're moving to a province over and then we'll be able to actually physically touch the truck finally. Thanks, chef. Yeah, so we're planning on like basically it's not necessarily like a food truck that is like fully licensed, like the way that Chef Steve runs his. I'm just gonna switch this so we can keep prepping as we chat. It's gonna be like a mobile kitchen, let's call it. And then it's gonna have a separate living space so that we can like travel Canada and also still host the stream from it and be able to meet our viewers, stuff like that. The slogan of the stream is spread the deliciousness. So you take that exactly how you want to. <laughs> so Dust, this is our first stream on our days off earlier this week. Sammy was really busy. He switched all of the stream stuff from our PC that was in the kitchen for my stream over to the iMac that we have. And so far so good. So like the Mac that we have, we're able to run windows on it sneakily. It's been working awesome. 
It's just hilarious to me because when we first, first started streaming in 2018, we used a MacBook and it was just like hell on earth, let's say. But to have this work so effortlessly makes me happy. And yeah, we thought might as well try it out before we put it in the truck, right? Suba, thanks for the follow. Welcome, welcome. And Cax does, hello. Yeah, bootcamp iMac from what he described. Exactly, Scarlett. Okay, let's get this last piece peeled. I'm going slow and controlled just because if you go too fast, you will like slip through the skin just because these are so heckin' juicy and ripe. Will the stream schedule be the same-ish? For sure, Orca, for sure. We are definitely aiming to keep the schedule the same. If anything, we might, we might eliminate these Thursdays just for a bit. We'll see though, but we'll for sure be streaming on the weekends. 100%. And as always, we'll keep you guys updated on how things are flowing. Just that, and then just this little bit down here. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to the streams. Oh, lurking and working from Boston, Massachusetts. It's nice to know someone in Boston. I, that's really a spot that I would love to come visit. Need some uh, lobster rolls in my life. So welcome, Sue. Okay, mangoes all peeled up, ready to go. Now we can slice them up. Recipe says to julienne, so let's try our best. Try our best. Mango's kind of slippy and slidey. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it here on the flat-ish side, let's say. And I'm gonna try and do two slices through. See how slidey it is? So once again, as you're slicing just this time, go nice, slow, and controlled. It might actually be easier. Let's put this down flat now and you're just gonna put your hand like this really flat slide your knife in where you want to cut I'm just gonna bring it closer to me so it's easier and then just slowly do that keeping the knife even as you go through and then that's how you get a nice even slice without the risk of the mango like falling over or you cutting yourself now we're good Man, my nose is still running. What the heck? I gotta go blow it in a little bit. Yeah, I don't often cut like this, but every now and then, it works good. And you really just go slow, okay guys? Cause you don't want the knife slipping out the other side and your fingers being there, etc. And see how I'm kind of holding it with my fingers curled too. That works really good. Keep the digits out. And obviously if your mango is nice and ripe, it should slide through no problem. Okay, I need to be right back. <laughs> I think what's uh, making my nose run is we're just straining this dressing here that we made earlier. So it's lemongrass, shallot, ginger, chili, sugar, salt, and lime to dress our mango salad. So I'm just straining it. So that's why we got the chili juices in the air, right? I'm gonna run away my nose. <laughs> You're watching the pizza VOD so closely. 
excuse me that you forgot I was live, Sketchy. <laughs> yeah, we live now. Hop on in. Okay, so I think it's definitely smart to leave like these two pieces stacked up on each other. Just make it easier for slicing and do the same with that. And then we'll slice kind of those four pieces separate. So all I'm gonna do, place that over, turn it this way because we're gonna be slicing that way now. And thank you, Jonathan Lacerda for the follow. Oh, let me see, Orca. Is this cheating? What are we cheating? Oh, <laughs> that's not cheating. I think that's a great way to like learn your knife cuts and stuff like that. Definitely not cheating. Okay, so I don't like when we eat a salad, when your salad ingredients are like too big to even put in your face. Like you shouldn't need a knife to eat salad with. So instead of just going straight, and having the mango lengths really, really long and hard to eat, we're gonna go on a bias. So just angle your knife and that way it's gonna be like a little bit shorter. So something like that. And then if we lift all that up, so juicy and just place that into the bowl and you'll see as we transfer it you can like break it all apart right but you can see just how ripe it is and I tried to even choose the ones that weren't like overly wrinkled and ripe just picked them up yesterday so next ones is the yummiest fruit sketchy it's so so good the fact that I've not just like mowed through this well it's because I have two extra mangoes to eat at any given time that we feel it's like I'm not only just gonna get mango for the one recipe I need a little extra in my life too you're not old you're just over right Mish says to her grandma. <laughs> if you were a fruit, you'd be the tastiest fruit ever, you should say. Yeah, mango smoothie, mango lassie, if anyone ever has that. Like a blended mango yogurt drink, it's so, so good. I do think I'm gonna munch on this one though. I just need it. Oh my gosh, Kami. Another place that I think if Sam and I came and visited, I don't think we'd leave is Hawaii. Although we would leave because Sam's just not like an ocean guy. So there is always that. And yeah, that's a heckin' good mango. One for Kate. Mmm. That one had like the nice little pepperiness to it. Okay. We're making progress on our fruit. Yeah, Homer drew a Golden Road Brewery in California makes a beer called Mango Cart. Oh, yum dust. A mango wheat ale. Yep. We can hike the volcanoes, totally. Is there like lagoons or like lakes there at all though, Kame? Not really, okay. 
Yeah, Sam's good at hiking. He does love to hike up a mountain. Also biking. Yeah, Orca, I would love that. And then the other thing I was gonna say about the cutting board, Orca, is like that would be kind of a cool thing for us to have in the food truck because we wanna host like one-on-one -on -one cooking classes. So it'd be really easy to like hand that cutting board to somebody that wants to learn stuff and be like, okay, here's your knife cut. Try and follow it the best you can. Maybe they could even take it home with them. You never know, right? So many things to think about. Mm. You have such a high concentration of fauna that any fresh water is just infested with microbes. Not so. I can't wait to visit. Okay, so this stuff's just gonna go into the fridge until we're ready to plate up the salad later as the dressing gets just spooned or drizzled over the top of everything. So keep this cool and fresh. And then one other thing I am gonna quickly prep is we need some cilantro for garnish. I'll grab that and chop it up. And then they also use the fresh lime leaves, which I only have dried, so I'm not gonna use that for the garnish today. Thirty euros per? That's not too too bad. Okay, let's just take a bunch off of this. And then it's mostly the leaves that we want. So I don't even know if I'm gonna actually chop this. We might just pick the leaves off of the stem and then just sprinkle them over the salad. Let's grab a little container for ourselves. Yeah, this cilantro looks so good. So if you have something that looks like that, you just pick the one small stem off the bottom. And I would say the cilantro in this recipe, it could be, it could be optional. I mean, obviously it would be better if you could eat it with it, but if you're someone who just tastes soap when you eat cilantro, you could leave it out. Yeah, bamboo is a good material. Sustainable to make. It lasts a long time. All good things, Orca. lots that's lots and lots let's put a little lid on that Pop that into the fridge. Let us see our little dress in here. <laughs> Leave Sam at home, they sell big green eggs. <laughs> Good one. Oh yeah, so we're just gonna press out the rest of the liquid here. That 
That worked really good. I love how like bright kind of yellow or orange it looks now. So I might just mix in a little bit more grapeseed oil to there. I'll give it one more taste as well, just to see if it's nice and balanced. I don't even think I'll use that bowl. Let's grab another spoon. That is so good and <laughs> spicy. But I've definitely balanced now like more of the shallot, chili, and lemongrass flavor, which I like. Yeah, definite spicy mouth, mouth from this one. Like I just feel the heat, but it's good. It is nice to have though, because if, if you've ever had tuna, you would know that it is a fatty fish, right? do about that for oil so the spice and the acid is gonna cut through that so good ever go overboard with a spicy spice mm, one of the hottest things we've had recently which was almost too much for me was the do you remember the Szechuan hot pot stream <laughs> It was so heckin' spicy. Even Sam was like crying when he was eating it. That was probably the spiciest thing we've made so far on stream. This is nowhere near that level. Mmm, that's so perfect. I really love that. Okay, I'm just gonna set that aside and hold tight. Just wanna snap a few lettuce leaves out of the garden. We'll be right back. Yeah, that dressing's just like begging for mango to be mixed with it. It's so beautiful out here today. Got a couple different kinds of leaves. Just give them, gonna give them all a nice little wash. So we got, remember when someone was asking what my favorite type of lettuce was? And I said jester. So this is what the jester lettuce looks like. It's so cool. This is just like a little romaine. And then this one, I got a wash real good. It was by the bird bath. That is a uh, red sorrel and it's got some sourness to it. I'm actually gonna soap this one up. <laughs> Don't often wash my veggies with soap. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and hi, Wilson. Sorry that I missed you while I was outside. But yeah, I was thinking we would just kind of tear up these lettuce leaves, I guess I'll rinse these too. Then we'll just pat them dry. Just tear them up on the bottom of a plate. Then we put our mango and pineapple over that. Then we dress them. And then we place our tuna on top of that. 
And Laura Avname? Laura Avname, thank you for the follow and for the raid. How are you doing today? What did you and your community get up to? And thank you for sharing them with us. I'm doing pretty good, Wilson. Feeling a lot better than last week. Oh, hope the raid worked okay. Yeah, it did. All is well. And hi, Rusty. Good to see you. I love that. We're out in the boonies, Kate. <laughs> Made iced oat milk mochas, yum. That sounds delish. Yeah, I recently tried the fancy like brown sugar oat drink from Starbucks. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, let's just stack these back up and then we can put them in the fridge as well until we're ready for them. Might even stay a lot fresher keep it from wilting if we just take a nice clean cloth, open it up, and then we'll just kind of wrap it in there. Whoop, whoop. Sea films. <laughs> I thought Wilson was a volleyball. Oh, he is. Why aren't we using the salad spinner? Just because it was a couple leaves, Lily. And I find like, unless I'm really cutting up lettuce for salads, it doesn't get too wet if you leave it whole. You can kind of shake off most of the water. So there's that. And then let's look over our list that we made earlier today. We're kind of just rolling right along here. The chocolate and oat milk mix so well. I could see that, yeah. Oat milk was like almost creamier tasting than like whipping cream really saturates your palate. Really happy with how they turned out? That makes me happy then. Okay, lemongrass dressing, check. Prep mango pineapple, check. Greens, check. Next thing on the list, prep up our tuna and peppers for the grill. And then we can bring everything together. So we're roasting some peppers or grilling some bell peppers today for a roasted pepper aioli tomorrow for a sandwich. I'll grab those. Got a cute pup, pup, pup waiting at the door. Hello. How are you? No, those weren't for you. Although I know you do like peppers. Are you a hot dog? Check out these fancy ones. Crescendo, sweet pointed peppers. Anyone ever use those? I really like them. Oh, that's where you open it. They're getting really good with like resealable bags now. I'm loving that. I think if we do those two red ones is what I was feeling, that'll be good. Now we have to think of something to use all of those up. Something for food for friends. Oh yeah, and then the other... Our other favorite thing that we picked up this week, because it is in season, is Kara Kara oranges. Anyone else eat those? They're not as sweet as normal bell peppers. Really, Orca? I think they're just as sweet. Maybe even sweeter. I'm just gonna give them a little wash. And then all we're gonna do is give them a rub with oil to prep them for the grill. That's it. bell pepper quiche yeah that would be good cara cara here i'll put it in chat for you scarlet basically as it sounds maybe it's because of our close proximity to california that we get like all of the really good citrus i would assume so right 
Okay, so let's grab two plates, because I'm going to grab the tuna right away as well. You're welcome. And hi, leftmost cat. How are you? Welcome, welcome. If you pick the bell peppers, Orca, you like the orange ones because they're the sweetest. I know I really don't like green bell peppers. If I'm going to choose a green pepper, it will be a poblano. Yeah, it literally looks like a tiny grapefruit color wise, but it's so sweet. It's so sweet, the flesh inside. All I'm going to do is pour a bit of oil just in my palm here and rub my hands together. And then we massage the pep. Sadly, this is kind of phallic today, but that's fine. <laughs> There's that, so that's prep for the grill. That's all we gotta do. Yeah, is that where palm oil comes from? Oh, sketchy. You need an Annie command for that one. That was really good though. Yeah, don't be sorry. We love the dad jokes here. Oh, are you ready to go then, pup pup? Is that is that what you need? Okay, come on. Good to see you. Yep, nothing's ready yet. We'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Peppers, good. I'll grab the tuna. Holy heck, and another raid! Nas Mule? I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you for the raid. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. How's everyone doing today? I'm Kate. Welcome to my kitchen. We've been streaming here in food and drink for crazy to say, but three and a half years now. So feel free to ask any questions that you may have. <laughs> Orca. <laughs> Naz is fine. Oh, thank you for letting me know that. It was lovely. Feel free to let us know what you got up to over on your stream. We love to hear about that as well. And yeah, just thanks for sharing your community with us. Okay, I'm thinking before we get the tuna out and prep it for the grill, because I don't want to season it and then have the moisture be drawn out from the salt. I think I'm gonna set up my camera for the outdoor cam. Is that possible, Sam? Yeah, it should be good with all the scenes that I did. I'll set up my camera and then we're going to light the fire. So we're doing a little bit of cooking over fire. We'll grill up the peppers and then we'll quickly sear the tuna. There we go. Gonna put the coconut sugar away while I have a sec. Yeah, it's so, so nice outside today. So I was like, well, we might as well do some cooking out there. Cooking with fire of madness. And hello, Jerlo. Welcome back. Nas, you did a week long sourdough starter set of streams. Nice. Today was making dough from brand new and developed starters. Tomorrow, you bake it. Very, very cool. Yeah, we also like to do sourdough stuff as well. And actually, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> I totally forgot to feed mine this morning. So I'll be making the ciabatta dough off stream. <laughs> Good thing about that, though, is the way that my Goldilocks is, that's her name, is she only takes like three hours to wake up before we can make a dough from her so that's not bad and yeah I always like to make my doughs early and proof them in the fridge because they just turn out so much better well we'll do that together while we're waiting <laughs> feed it now Orca might as well right okay so this is Goldilocks everyone say hi to Goldilocks she's been with us for over a year now and it was gifted this is a gifted starter from basically the start of the pandemic, let's say. And 
I know a lot of people usually feed their starters by like weight and stuff like that. Yours is Sour Douglas or Douglas. I like it. But yeah, I don't usually measure anything. I'm just getting this lukewarm water here. And I just feed it by feel more than anything. Yeah, Orca knows Goldilocks. Normally she's uh, making her way out of that container. <laughs> it's a bit too much water. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, now grab our flour. So I just use all purpose flour. You went for a walk today, madam? I am proud of you. Don't exercise regularly again yet, so you tried, yeah. No, that's how I felt on Sunday when my mom and I went for the Mother's Day hike. It felt really, really good. Like, oh, so that's how it feels to be like tired and sore. <laughs> We'll start with that and then we'll add a little bit more. I just like to do a little pre-mix at first and then I always mix it with a fork rather than a spoon because I feel like the fork kind of acts like a whisk. Goldilocks looks lovely, thank you. Thank you, yeah. I don't commit to like a daily feeding regimen for Goldilocks, it's typically just a once a week sort of thing. So she she lives in the fridge for the most part. And since you're like all about starters and you stream, I was gonna ask Nas, do you have a Discord? Cause in our Discord, we have like a sourdough starter section, which I think that you would really love and it's not super active, at least not yet. Okay, that's gonna get really thick. Now it's getting thick. That's how we want it. At yeast, not yet me. <laughs> gonna push that down. Nas, are you a professional baker? You do. It's only your second week streaming though, but there is, or it is there full of dough puns and picks from people who have been making a starter too. Nice. Yeah, Sammy's playing. He's setting up the outdoor cam. Did he test the scene? He sneakily tested the scene. So all I'm literally doing guys is the most important thing when you feed your starter is you don't want any flour lumps in the food. So you gotta mix this until it's really smooth. But I think that's part of like what makes the starter magical is like you kind of heat it up and wake up a starter when you do it like this. It's interesting. Okay, that's looking pretty heckin' good. And then the other thing is you basically wanna be feeding the starter. So this is Goldilocks here. You wanna feed her with an equal amount of food. And then she's gonna explode. You're not a pro, Nas. Nah, just bacon cook a ton and was persuaded to do it while a camera's on. Nice. Well, hopefully you enjoy and feel free to let us know if you have any questions about like your stream or anything like that is we've helped some other streamers before and have no problem doing that and yeah we are la costa hi hi sorry i missed you up there i'm also going to be once we mix this i'm going to split it back into this other container because it's just gonna grow out of it <laughs> she's a growing girl
Thanks, Sammy. Thanks, Sama Sama. Holy! Guys, he moved some stuff around so I don't gotta walk that far. It looks awesome. What? The mini max almost in, like in the kitchen. Okay, this is gonna be like impossible to stir. Almost. You guys know how I really push the limits. It's so happy. It's a really weird feeling, stirring sourdough starter. Like you can feel the life in it almost. Does anyone else feel that way that uses sourdough? Like you definitely can tell there's something going on in this container. Okay, that looks good guys, nice and smooth. So I was just going all the way down to the bottom with the fork and then bringing it back up and around. Oh, you usually lurk for the streams? Awesome, Nas. Happy to hear it. And I'm also happy that you're able to catch us live today. Okay, that should be about half. Wipe all that goodness off. And then we're going to start the fire. Started hanging out in food and drink streams and very quickly the same thing happened to you. Nice, left most. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Wait, he already started it? No, he didn't start the fire yet. He just set it up for us, Scarlet. Okay, so pop a lid on this other container as well. And then that is done. So I usually just pop those back here. It's kind of the warmest, warmest spot in the house. Gonna give this board a wipe. <laughs> yeah, Chris, good to see you as well, my dude. Hope that you are on the up and up. Must have been ash blowing. <laughs> okay, I'm also just gonna take a quick sip of coffee. All right, away we go. Look at that view. Just gonna grab the iPad so I can read chat with you guys. Maybe I'll put it back here. Today is day one of your day five vacation. Definitely on the up and up. That's awesome, dude. Love to hear it. Yeah, so far so good here. You know how we are saying kind of like a low energy week last week, but definitely feeling like Compared to last week, I feel a thousand times better. So first thing we're gonna do, just give this a stir. I'm also just watching, probably after today, we'll have to give it a vacuum out after today's cook, just to make sure that there's enough airflow through the bottom there. 
But this is gonna be a pretty quick cook, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it today. So we're just letting all the loose ash fall down through the bottom. Now let's top it up with some extra charcoal. Something like that should be great. I'm gonna put my glovey back on. And then, so I usually like to start with some smaller pieces. I'm just gonna pile some of the bigger chunks up top there. Then we can put them on afterwards. And then I always start my fire like a campfire. So kind of pile it all up in the center to get it started. And then we can break it down after that. Should be good. We got our loof lighter here, friends. And all we do, press this button, place the tip directly on the charcoal. And in two minutes or less, it is said that it will start your charcoal. And I will say it does work really, really good. Tired, full of delicious lunch left most, and your cat is not helping by napping on you. Yeah, just purring, so cute. Hey, we already have sparks, look at this. So once you have it hot and sparking, you can pull the loof lighter away a little bit. and then kind of aim where you want to start the fire. And also like put another little piece of coal in there now. But like basically once a few pieces get lit, it does not take long to light the rest. They remind you that you're alive. Can pull it back more. Okay, I'm just gonna stop for a moment. There's ants crawling on me <laughs> somehow. Let's do a little bit more pile up. For sure with that big chunk and that's the thing is we don't really need like a massive massive fire to be lit for this do a bit more sweet sweet sparks baby bubs i hope you are doing well today my man are you guys getting excited for your move as well you and Jess be you. Okay, that is happy, happy, happy. Now we'll take our other chunkies. Get them right up on there. This big guy I'll put over here. Stack that one there. And then the other one, I think I'll just do right on top. And then one more blitz. 11 days till the wedding, so exciting! Yeah, let's go, exactly. Okay, that's really, really happy. Really, really happy. So I think I'm just gonna close this up 
and let it marry on up with this charcoal. We'll even out the fire. We'll come check on this in about five minutes or so. And then about three weeks from now, you put the house on the market. Oh man, life's going to move real quick soon, hey? Well, it probably already is. <laughs> Okay, so back inside and we will prep up the tuna for the grill. Washing the charcoal hands. Partner made some Ecuadorian cheese and potato cakes with peanut sauce. Whoa, sounds good. Sounds delish. All right, I'm just grabbing the tuna and then I'll switch the scene. Okay, so here's our couple of little tuna loins. September 28th is when we were able to process these and happy to say that I did it all myself. So I'm going to try and save as much juice in the bag as possible. We don't want the tuna to be really wet when we go to grill it. So just careful as we take this out of here. And then the other thing is I think I'll probably just use a cloth to blot off any any extra juices. And if you look at the loin, so this is like a different part of the loin, right? So it's quite thin. And then there is some sinew just along this edge here that we'll have to watch for when we slice it. But like, look at, you can totally see the fat on the tuna. So, so good. So yeah, same with this one is there's always a bit of the sinew stringy bits at the tail end. It's with any other fish as well. So these are, we can also say like a bit of a lower quality part of the loin, but that's fine. Like I said, I, I did it all myself. So just kind of learning the different cuts as well. So we don't necessarily have to trim that up anymore. All I'm gonna do is just pour a little grapeseed oil back into my palm and give the fillets a little rub just to make sure that they don't stick to the grate because that would be sad. And then whenever the grill's ready, we'll do a quick salt and pepper season on each side. And then it's probably 30 seconds to a minute per side, not even, I would say. You do want a very, very hot grill for this and we want to keep the inside as rare as possible. A hundred and sixty-five times the bag counter. Love that, Orca. And tuna is like quite delicate. So we got to treat it with that delicacy as well. Because you can easily like mess it up. You can see how soft the flesh is. You don't want to tear it up or anything like that. Okay, we'll do another little hand wash. At least those are prepped with the oil. It's pretty good looking powdered toast. Pretty good looking little piece. It's gonna grill really quick. But I think for slicing wise, it should slice nice and clean. And this is albacore tuna. So this was caught up island, but there are also other types of tuna that are used around the world. All right, we're done with the oil for now. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We'll grill up the tuna first before the peppers. Yeah, free moisturizer. It's true. My hands are really, really soft right now <laughs> after rubbing with all the oil. 
But yeah, we'll grill the tuna up first. And then I always find after it's been seared, it really helps the slicing process if we pop it into the freezer for a few moments to like firm it up, firm the flesh up, and then it makes it so easy to have those clean slices. So while that's firming up in the freezer, we'll grill the peppers for tomorrow. Yay! I'm just gonna get out our salt and pepper, put that onto the board so we're ready to go. And then for grill prep, we'll take some tongs out with the peppers. And then the fish, like I said, is very, very delicate, right? So I'm gonna use this fishula, it's called, when we take the fish outside and it'll be more like a flip rather than picking it up with the tongs because you'll just really squish the whole piece of tuna that way. All right, should we go back out and check on our fire? I think it's probably looking pretty good. Three hundo, give it a little burps. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty dang good. Just gonna grab my ash mover. Kinda even out this bed of coals now that we got everything lit. That big chunk's lit. This one's all lit. That one is not quite, so I'm gonna leave it more in the center. So we can get it happy. These coals will spread more out to the edge. So when you're cooking right over charcoal, it's not about the temperature that is being read on the gauge. It's about how the charcoal looks. Because if you have any hot spots, you'll definitely find out right away. That can stay there. I think that will even back out. Put that down there for a sec. And if you're really worried, you can do that. Get this big chunk lit up a bit more. And then same with that one. All right. We'll close that up one more time. It is really, really nice out today, Sketchy. Probably after stream, I'm gonna sit outside for a few moments, get some vitamin D in my life. Is that a smoker, DJ Beats? Yes, it is. It is a mini max big green egg. So you can grill, you can smoke with it, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. It's very versatile. Yeah, it's lit, Scarlet. We almost there. So while we're waiting, I'm just gonna grab the plate down that I wanted to use for our tuna dish today. That's good. Yeah, so far, Orca, there's no affiliate link for the big green egg, but hopefully in the future, right? Okay, so peppers for the grill. I'm crossing that off as well as the tuna. We are almost there, friends. Very excited for this one. Been craving this. Big green egg is expensive and heavy, which also means that it should last you your entire life. And then they are also one of the companies with the Kamado style cooker that has lifetime warranty. So that's another big, big one that like 
a company like Kamado Joe does not offer to their customers. So yes, it might be a bit more upfront initially, but I think long-term wise, you'll get a lot, a lot better taken care of. And yeah, don't drop it on your foot. Yeah, that's right, Dust. Probably don't even realize how big they are until you see them in person. Yeah. The extra large, massive. XXL. Or yeah, the double XL is huge. All right, I'm checking. Let's check the fire again. Should be good to put the grill grate on, I would say. Yeah, we're at 450. So now I'm also gonna start evening out the temp. So I'm just gonna close the bottom vent about two thirds. About two thirds, maybe half. Give this a little burpee so you don't singe your eyebrows off. I just see like a spider falling out <laughs> somewhere somewhere and yeah this was the grate from the pineapple so we'll definitely need a little scrubby on that guy so we'll close that back up to get that burnt off should only take a few moments and then I also got the our scrubber brush here our bamboo bristle brush Putting the loof back. While we're waiting. <laughs> Cooked spider. Hi, Double Tap. How are you today? Cooked spider. Okay, we're almost back up to 400 F. Thanks for the follow, Chase. Welcome to the channel. Roll up this bag of charcoal. Keeping it clean. And so far, this dish has like zero dishes. I'm loving it. Okay, gonna give it a little burp. How's those sugary bits? Gonna give it like an initial scrape, I think. metal part just for the pineapple caramel ah. guys we almost died I don't know what this precarious setup was I'm just gonna fix it a bit okay better God, <laughs> it was not Kate proof. Okay, Whew. almost lost it. Death, death will ensue. Okay, I'm closing that one more time. OSM, good to see you. Oh, you're having a quiet birthday. Happy birthday, double tap. Guys, we need some happy birthdays in chat for Double Tap. And JK, how are you doing? The sound of large chunk charcoal is a lot like the sound of pouring out Legos, yeah. <laughs> totally. Okay, since we're almost ready, I'll bring the peppers out. Then we'll 
we'll come back in, season up the tuners. Put that a bit lower, there we go. Oh yeah, the bird bath. I feel like a robin's gonna come over pretty soon, Dust. But it's my fave. It really is. It's it's busy all through the day. I usually have to add about two liters of water to it every single day with how many birdies use it. Hi Kareem, welcome back. Great to see you. You're very happy, JK? Yeah, I'm feeling very good this week as well. Okay, she's glowing. There we go. All right, I'm gonna close that up one more time. We'll quickly come back inside. Season up the tuna. Robins are your cat's favorite as well. <laughs> when the cats make the hilarious little mouth chirping noises when they watch birds. So weird and hilarious. One of my favorite things that they do. <laughs> Scarlet, put the marinade in the bird bath. You guys are savage. Okay, so we oiled up our tuna earlier by just rubbing it with a little bit of vegetable oil. We use grapeseed. Now we're just going to season it with some salt and pepper. We'll just do two sides. And we want to season the fish as close to cooking as possible because the salt is going to start to draw out moisture almost instantly. And then it's really hard to sear something that is wet, right? Okay, quick wash up. Your cats were scared of a bird orca? That's adorable. They must be house kitties then. You can't do fish like a steak and let it dry, Brian, can you? No, definitely not. Yeah, you could like almost cook fish if you leave it for an extended period of time with the salt on it. It's very, very delicate. So like even marinades, if you were to marinate fish, it's 15 minutes, that's it. Oh, one was feral once, cute. Okay, let's go back out. It is time. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're really close to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Just had to flick an ant off of the table here. Got a bit of an infestation outside. Give that a burp ski. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start by putting the biggest piece on first. Try not to disturb our salt and pepper seasoning either. The bed of coals looks pretty nice and even. I'm gonna go like kind of on an angle because I see a nice hot spot right there. And then this one I'm just gonna put there. And then I'm gonna take in the, the dirty plate, wash my hands real quick and then come back out with a clean one. And then those will probably be ready to flip. We're 
good. Mmm, smells good. Okay, I'm just looking at the side here. Almost ready to flip. Almost. And yeah, I have the bottom vent completely open. So we're giving the charcoal as much fuel as we can right now to keep it really nice and hot. Okay, ready? Test. Test flip. One thing we do know, if it doesn't want to lift off the grate yet, it's not ready. This one I think is though. Almost. So that's kind of a sign. And same with when you're grilling literally anything. If it is still stuck to the grill grate, that just means it's not ready to flip over yet. And yeah, we're going for rare Scarlet. Nice little rare bitty on the inside and a nice outer kind of layer where it's been seared, right? Sometimes we gotta help it just a touch, like this little guy. Okay, so we're loose. Uh, I'll do, gonna flip it over there so we can quickly sear that one side. Just using that one loin, right? To kind of prop it up. Should be very, very quick here. And then we should be able to flip the other loin. Mmm. Well, I didn't put any oil on the grill for this. But I am kind of relying on the fat from the fish as well, Orca. Because tuna... Ooh, I didn't want to flip it there. But that's fine. We can't move it now. <laughs> Usually I move it a bit and then flip it over. Because tuna is quite fatty, right? So it shouldn't stick to the grill regardless. And you can kind of see here on the fatty parts where it crisps up over the charcoal. This is what I'm going to do. Just literally going to turn the, the grill grate. Never seen before on Cook with Kate. good actually <laughs> high tech sketchy okay i'm gonna flip this one over should be good yep there we go and you guys can kind of see the line now that we're getting this one's still kind of stuck there so i was moving the grill grid around to the nice hot spots to move this a bit more. Oh, okay, it's not stuck. Ha ha ha. Okay, so see how I moved it there? And now I'll just hold it on the one side. This guy is done. <laughs> Don't recommend just picking it off the grill with your bare hands. And hi, Scat. How are you doing? Happy Thursday. That's a neat trick to turn the grate. That's kind of the only thing I thought about there, Frank. I was like, okay, how can I get this to the nice warm spot that we want? Okay, let's check this side. We're good. I'm just going to roll it now. Go away from yourself. I'm going to go on this other flat side. But you can see how it really sears and crisps up the fatty tuna. Smells really good too. Oh yeah, Orca, when grilling on the stove or in a pan, if you can't flip it over, that probably means it's not oiled enough. It's true. Okay, we're going to take this off now. 
that's how it looks. If you look on the inside, it's still nice and rare. And now I'm just going to close this up, burn off that tuna fat, and we're going to put our two pieces of fish just into the freezer so they can firm up and chill and be really easy to slice. Nice, almost vacay time. Did you tell us where you're going, Scott? I can't recall if you let us know already where the location is or if you're just having a staycay. Don't know if that'll fit there. I don't think so. Yeah. That's the house builders. Okay, just washing my hand. That egg is smoking. I don't know what's happening upstairs. Oh, that's what you're asking the noise. Must be doing some like bathroom work or something. I don't know. Okay. Smells nice and clean again. We're back up to 450. Gonna give that one more scrapey. Oh, that was just me. <laughs> Kinda move that back again. And then we have our bell peppers. Our sweet peppers are already oiled, just rubbed with grapeseed oil on the outside, all over. And we're just gonna take those whole, place it right over the charcoal. And for this, we want a pretty nice hot heat as well, I would say. You don't want the peppers to go like mush mush. Definitely wanna get some char on the skin. But this we can grill closed, I would say. Ah, installing a shower glass. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> can hear something. And yeah, Bonk, it's just because the table right now is a bit uneven is the front two legs of the tripod are a little bit lower than the back one, so a bit uneven. Do this for dust. Since he lay, said he liked the bird bath, we might be able to catch something in it. And yeah, these peppers to grill, I would say no more than 10 minutes. And that's about the same amount of time that it's going to take the tuna loins to firm up before we can slice. So perfect. Perfect, perfect. I'll just kind of keep peeking at the peppers these next few moments. Finish up my coffee while we're waiting. And then once we have a little bit of lunch together, we are going to learn how to trim a brisket together and get it prepped for the smoker. That's the next set for today. So yeah, a bit of a shorter stream because tomorrow is gonna be a marathon.
I smell sweet peppers. Let's give this a lift. Usually when you can smell them, it means you got some cooking going on. Oh yeah. Look at those charred little bitties. I'm just gonna give that a little flip around. That one's doing good as well. It's okay, Scott. It's okay to ask. So tomorrow's stream is smoked beef brisket served as sandwiches, which we've never done before. So I'll be making the sourdough ciabatta bread tonight and we'll make buns tomorrow. And then going on the sandwich is, this is why we're grilling the peppers today. So we'll make a nice roasted red pepper mayo to go on the brisket sandwich with a nice little handful of spinach and pickled onion. And then the side is gonna be a tangy apple slaw. And cookies are snickerdoodles. Yeah, it should be good. So Samuel will be on early, early. Basically end the stream today. And then 12 hours from that point, we'll be back on. <laughs> okay, lift this up again and we'll give it a little flip. Yeah, look at that. And also I'm just gonna go grab Sam's phone so I can get a bit of egg content. Oh, there's a really cute birdie coming. Okay, I'm gonna go back inside. Look at, he's so brave. He's so brave. Hi, buddy. That's for you. Yeah. Come on. You're the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. See, I'll go back. I won't look at you. He says, don't watch guys. Okay. Yeah, it's a type of woodpecker. He's new here. He's only come in the past like two weeks as we recognized his call. I was like, what is this? Okay, let's open. So I heard those pops when we flipped this over. No, we're still good. stuff to say today. <laughs> Are you showing off? It's actually the cutest thing ever. I don't know if I can turn the gimbal. If he'll stay. Ah, oh, he just leaves. Dang it. <laughs> He's like, oh shoot, now I broke it. Now I broke it, guys. Give me a sec. I shouldn't have done that. You son of a. Okay, if I sneakily. <laughs> Guys, I give up. I'm taking the peppers off and we're going in. That was the sign. They're done anyways. Adios. I'll just take that as the sign. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That was my exit. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab... What do I want to grab here? Yes. I'm gonna grab some plastic and all we're gonna do to help take the skin off, we're just gonna wrap it nice and tight and trap some steam in there. Definitely the longest interaction that it looked like it's ever been. And the fact that you just drilled those there. Yeah. So that was so adorable. <laughs> that was my sign to leave, Lauren. Okay, so see how it's getting steamy? That's exactly what we want. We'll take a peek at those in a bit. Yeah, the birdly totally knew, guys. He was like, I'm out of here. Okay, so while the tuna is finishing firming up, we can start to plate our mango pineapple salad. Growing family life, thanks for the follow. Why do you have to remove the skin after you roast the pepper, Rainy Shrew? Done it many times, but I've never understood why. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, you remove the skin because it gets kind of papery and hard, and it's not, not the nicest to eat, I guess, on the palate. And other than that, it's really charred, so it can taste burnt and bitter, depending on how much you char it, right? A red-breasted sapsucker? Well, we have the sapsuckers here, but they're a lot smaller than that. I think it's just a red-headed woodpecker, like... No, that's not quite like what I see when I Google. A pelleted one? No, he's not red enough. I actually don't know. And hi, Helquin. Yeah, because the one that comes up... It must have been. Yeah, that must have been the male sapsucker. And we usually see the little female going around because she's just black and white. Yeah, 100%. Red-headed sapsucker. Unless we just brought a new kind of sap sucker in. That's pretty cool. Powder toast. BB Bubs wants to know your thoughts on this. Steamed dumplings in a bamboo basket, but on the smoker. You could do that. Would the smoker like light it on fire though, the bamboo? <laughs> so you would need something underneath to keep steaming, right? Could you just do it over top of the wok? I don't think it'll work. Because it's got to cover the edges of the wok, right? The steamer basket. Yeah. I mean, you never know unless you try. That's the thing. Yeah, over a pan of water, exactly. Yeah, I think it would be easier just to do it over the stove to get that constant pan of water temperature. I don't think you would get anything. You could do it. Yeah. Yeah, you could totally do it. For the sake of doing it, would you get anything from doing it? Probably not. Well, what if this would probably be a better way to go about that if you want the infused smoke flavor? Smoke water and then steam your dumplings with the smoked water. I don't even know if that would impart the flavor. Uh, Thoughts. Okay, so here's our fancy little lettuces that we picked earlier from the garden. I'm just gonna tear them up a bit. Kind of place them around the plate is what I'm thinking. Or, actually, yeah, that's what I wanna do. This is red sorrel, it's quite sour, so it should be really good with this. 
Yeah, you can smoke water. It's so weird. Like, so then you can take the smoked water and for instance, boil an egg in it. And then you get a smoky flavored boiled egg. Oh, Quinn's just like, what the heck, Kate? <laughs> Why do you do this to us? That's a nice little bed of greens. Top with the frutas and the tunas. This is just our cilantro leaf garnish. And hi, Barracuda. Good to see you. Please keep you in the loop about the smoked dumplings. You need to see it. Okay. So we got two different types of fruit here. We got fresh mango as well as grilled or charred pineapple. Just kind of loosely pile this stuff around, kind of layer it up. And then we drizzle over our chili, lemongrass, and shallot dressing. There's also a bit of lime in there. And then I was thinking we would just kind of slice the tuna and plate it over the center once it's ready. Some of these pineapples in. Does flavoring water that you steam something with usually transfer? I don't know. Double tap. That's the thing is I've never tried that before. It was just like a suggestion, something that came to mind. Do this one other piece of pineapple and that should be good with that. Great. It would make sense. It's a little hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good, guys, for the fruit. There, I agree with Vaughn. It's more of an essence than actual flavoring and burning. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. You get like more of the aroma than like a very strong flavor, which is what you want, really. Really. Okay, let's just give this a little swirl around our dressing. <laughs> that way we got more mango leftovers to eat sketchy. Yeah, I'm into that. Still got two whole ones in the fridge too that are calling my name. I don't want this to get too like runny all over the plate. There's that. Then we come in with our little garnish. It also provides some nice, nice contrast against the greenery underneath. right now for garnish I'm gonna grab some of the Korean chili flake and just do a nice little sprinkle over top of the mango 
got some red bitties in there. You wouldn't want to put the charcoal directly into the water. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. Okay, so just a pinch, but then it looks so good. That's what it was missing, I feel. Time. Just gonna get a little cutting board. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Welcome in. That's what I imagine the fridge and freezer chime is saying every. Every time it goes beep a beep. Like, welcome back. Anyone else? No, oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, it's definitely firmed up. It's like frozen to the plate. Firmed up. There's our salt and pepper grilled tuna. I am going to place it. I think this way to slice. That side down. Grab a slice and knife, and away we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this edge. Let's just kind of even it out. And so I'm gonna go forward and then back, and then we should get through it. Kind of looks like chicken. I mean, they do call. Okay, so forward and back, I said. They do call it the chicken of the sea, Mish. That was a good slice. So forward, back, or back and forward. But we want really clean knife cuts here. Otherwise, I would find that the tuna kind of falls apart. I think that was a pretty good cook on our end. I mean, cooking directly over charcoal is not the easiest thing. And yeah, I usually go like really nice, slow and controlled. When I slice the tuna, basically just for the photo, really. But so now we can see about what I was talking about. I might actually flip this over. So this edge, you can see the little bit of white sinew pieces sticking out. So it's just connective tissue. So kind of the same the same way that we clean the silver skin from chicken and stuff like that. So tuna has that too, obviously. And then it makes it really hard to slice through as it'll basically just mush it up. I'm hoping that if we flip it, yeah, that's sliced a bit better. So just kind of pay attention as you slice it. Yeah, we wouldn't want our chicken that raw though. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get as many slices as I can out of this one loin and then we'll save the other one for salmon myself. And we really don't wanna be putting any like down, down force pressure on the knife because that's also how you like mush mush through the fish. We want just the blade to basically do the work. Oh, that top piece. I'm just like, no, Kate, I'm out of here.
And then obviously as we get close to the bottom of this, it's gonna get more and more cooked because it's thin, right? So I'm gonna stop there. That's a good little amount, I would say, for a photo. Bring our salad plate back over. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good, Lauren. And have a wonderful walk. All I'm gonna do, probably just divide this in half so it's a bit easier to transfer. I'm gonna flip this piece over. It doesn't look that nice. Maybe same with that one. Okay, so we'll start with those pieces. So slide your knife under and decide where you're gonna place them. I said I was just running it through the center of this. I did hear that we got a raid. It's happening here. Evlobius is raiding, hello. Sets and reps. I hope I'm saying that right. Eviobius, maybe? Moose a boot? We must have some Canadians in here then. <laughs> Welcome in, friends. I hope you are doing well. And thanks for sharing your community with us today. How was your stream? And what did you get up to? Do you stream cooking? Do you stream something else? You came in right at the perfect time here as we're just just getting into plating up our lunch. Finished cooking. And then we'll taste it together. See if we're happy. That's a lot of tuna. <laughs> now you're hungry. <laughs> Crushing a workout and now you're hungry. This is a pretty good dish to eat after a workout, I would say. Low carb. I'm just trying to even this out for plating. I'm just gonna pick up this whole chunk. Here we go. And yeah, we just finished grilling this tuna directly over charcoal. We have a big green egg that I like to use on stream. There we go. I'll leave those other two pieces out because I just felt like they didn't need to be there. And then one other thing I'm just gonna do to get a bit more sheen on the tuna, I'm just gonna do a nice drizzle with some single press olive oil. <laughs> Licks this green. <laughs> yeah, take one order to go. Moose a boot, where are you at? Where are you at in Canada if you are still there? Just going by your username. We're out on Vancouver Island. Food and workouts totally go hand in hand. And I will also say, uh, what year was it? I think it was 2016. I competed in a bodybuilding challenge. So yeah, I'm not scared of the gym. That's for sure. Do a nice drizzle kind of back and forth. Just give that the sheen that we kind of are looking for, I would say. Okay, I'm gonna, this is how I would present it to you. So for my photo, I'm just gonna turn it to me for a sec. Oh, you're in Ontario, nice. That's where my husband's parents live right now. And we'll eventually be making our way out there. It is in the next few months, we're gonna be transitioning the stream into a mobile truck where we're able to travel from, host the stream and cook and share food with people. It's a nice photo for sure. Get a little bit closer. Sweet, all right the moment we've been waiting for. So this is gonna be pretty spicy as the dressing has a good amount of chili in it. Thanks for the follows as well, friends. Diamondo, we got Evie, Zoe Marie, Swingman, Sets and Reps, 
Yeah, peer pressure. <laughs> I'm not scared, trust. I've been streaming on Twitch for three and a half years now. There's not a lot now that really makes me feel pressure. What? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Let's get into it. I'm gonna, obviously, I wanna taste the piece of tuna that's right in front of me here, because it looks so good. And then all I'm gonna do, should we taste the tuna right away with the mango, maybe? Take this little mango piece. Oh, it's really soft. Okay, so this that's my bite. I got a piece of cilantro and mango underneath. Mmm. The mango with the tuna is so refreshing. I didn't get any spicy bits in that bite. So let me have a bit more of the, the greens because that's where we poured most of the dressing. We'll load some greens onto the fork with another piece of tuna. I'll go for this little one instead. And then do a little swirl around too. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like a bit more spices on there. Yum. Musa Boot, thanks for the follow too. Mmm. A lot more flavor. That's good. Get the shallot, ginger, lemongrass, the spice a bit. The pineapple grilled tastes really good with the tuna. Cause they were both grilled right over the charcoal, right? So they got very similar flavors that complement each other. bit more mango. I'm also going to try it with some of this sour, it's a red leaf sorrel is what it's called. I'm going to have one more bite. I think we could totally drizzle some of the dressing over the tuna as well. It'd be good. Cookie, thank you for those biddies. Thank you very, very much. Going towards the food truck fund. 421,000. That is so healthy tasting and feeling refreshing. It kind of wakes you up. I'm loving this. That's really, really good. Okay, I'm just gonna put the tuna that we sliced from just back in the fridge for now to keep it nice and fresh. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Pack duds look scrumptious. It's really good. Yeah, you're not gonna finish this whole thing and feel bad about yourself. Definitely not, Cookie. Like, all it is is greens, fruit, fish, and there's like barely any oil in the dressing. We only added the oil because we felt like it needed it. Super, super yum, though. I'm so happy that I tried this recipe. So here it is, friends. If you wanna make it for yourself, I could also see this being pretty good with like a grilled salmon obviously you don't have to serve it rare but yeah like any type of grilled fish over this really nom happy with that one very very happy that's definitely a make again okay back to our peppers here so now they got all steamed up 
kind of cooked it through almost that way and like look at how soggy they are now. So we're just going to de-seed them and take the skins off together today. And then all we got to do tomorrow is make our roasted pepper mayo for the sandwich. Sammy is over on the side here having a few bites. So the first thing, it's so good. First thing that we start by doing is just peeling off any of the papery skin. Should be quite simple. That's why we covered it with the wrap to finish steaming it. And yeah, now that the tuna and like the mango and everything is on the plate, it's not overly spicy at all, considering we added four Thai chilies in. <laughs> He's loving it. And yeah, now is the time to buy mangoes, at least in North America, if you reside there. So get that in your life. Okay, let's peel the next one before we open this up. It'll just be easier. But you can see how easy that was, hey? There we go. I was like, hello? Sammy literally just crushed half of the plate. I guess it wasn't good. <laughs> But it's not too spicy that it makes you not want to eat it. Nope. Which I think is super, yeah, makes you want to keep going and going. So this is just discard into the compost. And now we'll open these up. So all I usually do is start at the top. Ooh, mango sorbet, yum. And sounds good, Evie. Thank you for sharing your community with us today. Excuse me, bell to approval for the chef. And I hope you stop by again sometime. And good luck with your streams in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's true, Orca. Okay, look at how juicy this is. Mmm. Just literally trapped inside of there. What? Probably tastes really, really good. But what we're trying to work on is just keep all the seeds out. Kind of co-mingle them and then I think all I'm going to do is pour it towards this edge and we're just going to take this whole piece with the stem and pick it off. And that just rub off and that's a perfect piece of grilled pepper. Next one. You guys can tell I've done a few uh, roasted peppers in my life, eh? Like, how can I do this the most efficient and cleanest way possible? This is what I've figured out over the years. You peel the skins off first, and then you make that slit, open it up, lift it up so that all the seeds are at the bottom of the pepper, and then they just come out all at once like that. This is for just a roasted red pepper mayo for this sandwich tomorrow, Dust. But I thought since we had the grill on today, we might as well get them done early, peeled, ready, cooled off, so that tomorrow we just have to make up our condiment together. Yeah, you can buy them in a jar, a jar as well, usually packed in oil. Really, really good. But for some reason around here, we've not been able to find the roasted red pepper in the jar. So no other way but to do them ourselves. 
<laughs> okay, that's done. And next up, I'm just gonna grab the brisket from the fridge and our big cutting board, as well as a boning knife. And we're gonna trim up the brisket for tomorrow's stream. And yeah, hi, hippie, how are you doing? Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to do, is just take a quick little bathroom break. Samuel, get the brisket out and ready for us. This. Okay, hold tight. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Gonna have a quick sip of water. Yeah, brisket trimming time. Do I know Stacy Roy? I have heard of her and I've seen a few of her streams. I also know that she is a Canadian. So I guess I know a little bit. She recently got a big old smoker, planning on doing a ton of smoking and grilling brisket and ribs over the next year. Oh, I wish her luck then, Green Fang. You're doing okay, hippie. Beautiful afternoon there. Left work a little early. Gotta love that, hey? And we're having the same afternoon, which I'm pretty excited about. Get a little bit of vitamin D in my life. Okay, just gonna get our bone-in knife down and I'm just gonna put it on our steel. For a spec first. And hi, Titan. How are you? Oh yeah, Green Fang. What was the brand of smoker? That's what we need to know. All right, I'm gonna get the garbage beside me for this juicy meat bag once we get the brisket out. I am doing good, Titan. I am doing, well, almost like a thousand times better it feels this week compared to last. <laughs> and hi, Blondie, good to see you as well. Ready guys, brisket versus Kate. Not bad, not bad. So this is, if I turn it over, triple A. Canadian beef brisket. Whole we pay $11.99 a kilo. And we know, what do we pay? $3 less a kilo? Yeah, so just going one province over, $3 less per kilo. That's how much we can save. Oh yes, and it's also a halal brisket. So even better quality. Oh, okay, it's on her social media post. I don't think I follow her, so I will have to go inspect Green Thing. Yeah, only 92 bucks, right? And it's even cheaper when we go to Alberta. So yeah, we're showing you guys today how to prep a brisket for a smoker in particular. It's always really hard to hang on to. <laughs> Oh, 
We're getting there. Just slowly working it out so I don't spill any of those juices. And yeah, this piece of meat, I don't know. I didn't look at the weight on it, but she ain't light. Success. Whew. She weighs 7.6 kg. Holy. And hello, Red Gemester. Okay, so this part, you can see how it's flipped up. Should actually be the other way. And that's fine. Trying to even it out. Looking at it though, it's got a nice thickness. So we always kind of look at the flat here and see how thick it is. You can see it's quite thin there, but usually we trim it up anyways. So what we're gonna do here is we're basically streamlining this to go on the smoker so that when it's smoking low and slow, the smoke kind of flows over it the way that air flows around a car. <laughs> yeah, so same thing. And yeah, Rasta, it is brisket. Yeah, almost 17 pounds. And you know it's big when it barely fits on this big cutting board, that's true. Yeah, just for you, Scat. In the past, people just threw out brisket because it's such a tough cut of meat and they didn't know how to cook it to get the most of it out of it. That's so sad. I'm just gonna turn this a bit more for myself. Where's Sam? Can you be in here with me when I do this? Just for guidance, I like it. He's, he's the smoke or he's the pit master, guys. I'm just learning as we go to make sure that I'm also able to do all of the things too. Soul Rack, thanks for the follow. Where's Sam? Uh, I believe the brisket is like this, is it the back part of the, it's right under the, okay, so right here then, yeah. like going up from under, under your armpit and up the back kind of. Yeah, okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, just like looking at this flap, Sam. Yeah, like the lat part. Of yeah, the lat, good one. <laughs> the not lat. really? Not the neck, that's for sure. It's definitely not the neck. It's underneath the chest. Yeah. Okay, so see how this is kind of just sitting up? So we're just gonna kind of trim that off, just like that. And nothing bad is it's gonna happen. Nice elf mohawk. Hold it taut. Move it back. Should be good. Yep. Okay. This part. Yeah, this, if we left that on guys, it would just burn up over the 12 hours. So it's pointless to leave it on. You're either gonna burn it or take it off now and have a perfect brisket. See where that line is dipped in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, because this part is really thin as well, we trim that off, like there. Yeah. And then we can save that for grind. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's all good stuff. That looks good. Now, yeah. So now I just want to show you guys kind of how this looks on the side. How it's like not really even. Or maybe you can't really tell from that end. But the way that this is, is it kind of comes up and then around. So this is a really big fat cap right here. You could also kind of tell the thickness, right? And how it looks. So we're just going to even out that fat cap. So like I said, it's all streamlined and it just flows. You don't want the smoke to get like caught on any place in the smoker. The bits I'm chopping off, I always save to grind into some sort of beef if I need to. 
Yeah, that's tuna. <laughs> Shiggity. <laughs> or yeah, this piece, like Torino said, we can use for stock. Like a fancy swimmer. Okay, so I'm going to start kind of here. That was pretty good. And then just a bit here. So this little bit, you can kind of see how it's sticking out underneath. Just clip that more towards myself. Like start up here and come up. Okay, that's where it kind of starts anyways. That was all just fat, guys. This little piece. Not gonna trim anything more here, I don't think. That looks great, guys. We, we save all this stuff and then make a sock, and then we take all the fat on the top of the sock, freeze it. And I think we have like two kg worth of lard currently. Yeah. What Sammy said. Vune's talking dirty. Okay. This little flap here can trim that up a bit as well. And then we just have to clean off the silver skin and connective tissue on the back side here. I'm going to start this way. Yeah, green fang, go back and... We did a pastrami beef tongue. It should be still in the VOD. Should be. So that looks good. And yeah, like I said, just the connective tissue. So I'm just going to start at this point and then work my way to the end. Too tired to drool right now. That's adorable, Orca. Thank you. Sammy taught me good. That's all it really is. If you want to get better at cooking, you have to be willing to learn and to be able to like slowly build up your confidence and know that you're like actually getting better. But I think for the most part to be really good in the kitchen is you just have to have an open mind and know that there's not just like one way to do something. Yeah. Sammy says if we do end up processing a lot of meats, get a chainmail apron to wear. Just for safety. Nice Torino. Getting a half pig and a half cow to share. So useful. I wish I was there to butcher it with you guys. It's so fun. Because, like, while you're butchering the animal, you're kind of thinking about all the things that you want to do with it, right? I want to make this with this. I yeah. This with this. I'm going to use this for this part. And we're going to make 
this shape like this and then we're gonna do it like this well that's the thing sam is you probably shouldn't get that much meat if you don't know what you're gonna do with it because then it's just gonna sit in the freezer and die so scat it's a lot easier to get beef in alberta a lot easier i'm pretty sure we're still gonna do the half cow at one point yeah we are i'll put all the metal tables together so we have four of them i think you only need three sam three yeah lengthwise yep So yeah, it doesn't look like I'm taking a lot of stuff off of here, but it's really important to take that off because it's not going to soften over the period of the cook. It's just going to get harder and harder to eat. This little flap, sometimes it's nicked by the butcher. Prior to you touching it, we're just going to trim that little piece off. Like we keep saying, those little bits will just burn up on the smoker. Should be one of the last cuts here. How's that, Simon? Yeah? That makes me so happy. Okay. So yeah, there's always going to be that little line there, right? Pretty sure that's what I've seen in the past as well. So no point to try and dig into there because then you're just going to open up the meat and it's not going to cook evenly. Yeah, hopefully it wasn't dead before you put it in. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I did good, guys. So now we can just put that into a hotel pan for tomorrow. And at 2 a.m. PST, Samuel will be rubbing this all with Dijon mustard and spicing it with some salt and pepper. That's it. Did I say 2 a.m.? Or did I say 2 p.m. or 2 a.m.? I feel like I said 2 p.m., but it was supposed to be a.m. Yeah, all about that jiggle. And yeah, we'll be smoking this on the big green egg tomorrow. Are we doing the XL? Sam or the L? Oh. Yeah, Dijon mustard is what we use just to adhere the rub. So the main person that we have learned how to smoke meat from is Franklin Barbecue in Texas. So this is going to be a Texas barbecue style brisket. And he uses two different condiments, let's say, to adhere the salt and pepper rubs. You can either go the route of Dijon mustard if you want, which you never taste at the end of it, or if you're feeling a little bit spicy, you can rub it with hot sauce. But once again, you don't really taste the spice at the end. You just taste the unctuous smoked meat. That's really it. Yeah, early morning for Sammy, exactly. Does Texas barbecues tend to inject seasonings into the meat as well? I'm just taking the beer out so I don't spill it. Uh, not from what I've heard, Torino. Got it. She barely fits in. And yeah, like we said, all of the trim. So this I'll save for grind because that's a really nice piece. And then the rest I just save in the freezer for a beef stock. That's it. Yeah, I guess Dust would know. This is where our fellow Texans can weigh in. Is the fat that was left on the brisket? Yes. If so, is it necessary for cooking? Yes. 
sleepy. So we don't want to disturb that fat cap too much because that's what creates the crust and like seals all of the juices into the brisket as it smokes. So yeah, you definitely want the fat on there. That's really it, Dust. That's really it. That's what we've learned from Franklin and he has a ton of amazing YouTube videos if you want to get into this is we've only been doing it for about six years now. Six years, it doesn't, like to us, that's nowhere near enough to perfect this style of cooking. Like maybe once you get to the 10 year mark, you'll be happy, right? I'm not sure if I wanna do 225 yet or 275. Now, normally we do it at 275. I haven't done a brisket at 225 in a while. Mm. I don't know, I'll see when I'll wake up in the morning. He'll let you guys know in the morning and a vinegar based sauce. So yeah, we're doing a different style of barbecue on Saturday is I'm finally getting into the Alabama white barbecue sauce. We're gonna be grilling up some chimkins on Saturday and serving that with the Alabama sauce, which I'm so excited. That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. And that's the other thing. So Dust is saying like he doesn't like the sauce and that's another typical Texas barbecue thing is not everything is served with barbecue sauce. It shouldn't need it the way that they look at it. It's like if your barbecue is served with sauce, it must not be good. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. A kiwi mango beer. Wow, what a nice beer to eat with or drink and eat with the rest of my lunch. Mango salad? Is that why you're feeling mango? Mm. And the white sauce, it's actually like a vinegar mayo base. Very intriguing, Torino. Okay, who are we gonna go raid, friends? So yeah, like I said, today is a bit shorter just because we need to, or Sammy in particular, needs to rest up for tomorrow's smoking marathon. Go to bed in four hours. Chef Megan, Torino? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good, sounds good. You wanna come and say hi, pupper? Let's go support another female creator. Oh, we got a pupper. Okay, we'll say we'll say bye with the pupper while I get this raid set up. So yeah, guys, early stream tomorrow. If you want to be there with Sammy, I'll probably be up. Hey, get out of the garbage. Come here. Oh, are you eating my hands? Please don't do it. So Sammy will be on at 2 a.m. Pacific and I'll probably wake up around six or seven usual. What'd she say? She's like, I'm here for the meats. Excuse me. <laughs> She's like, nope guys. Oh, I thought I hit the button. I didn't. I got too excited. <laughs> ah! She's going to eat ya. Posh, posh. She's like, what is it, Kate? Are you ready to say bye? You guys need a shmoo roo? Can you get one roo? No, she's not rooing, Sam. Okay, can hey. you? Or I'll fix it. Roo roo. Roo roo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, friends. Love you guys. Thanks for all of the resubs today as well. And welcome in all new follows from all of our raids too. Welcome to the community. And thank you for all of the biddies and gifted subs. It all means something to us and we definitely appreciate it. Kulatra20, thanks for the follow as well as parody of self. Okay, let's go see what Chef Negan is up to. Sammy's gonna be on at 2 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. Bye.